Netball New Zealand basically asked us to look at the entire campaign uh, of the Silver Ferns from 2016 right through to the games in the Gold Coast and to really identify both the, the good, the bad and possibly even the ugly uh, in relation to that whole campaign. Well the peer review process uh, involved uh, two really highly respected members of our sporting community, so Tracy Fear uh, and Eddie Colassi, providing sort of an overarching, almost reality check. Uh, and I must say I found the process really useful. Um, got, I've got huge respect for both of them. Uh, and while none of the findings changed, um, they certainly challenged some of our thinking and made us um, ask some hard questions. I think we had a lovely cross-section of skills. Um, uh, myself being a former chairman of, of Netball New Zealand and, and involved in sports governance and sports law for a long time. Uh, Kevin Shoebridge uh, provided huge value, uh, just giving a totally different perspective, a, a, a yachting perspective, and obviously uh, having been through a number of campaigns uh, with Team New Zealand uh, and around the world. And then Linda Wagner gave us that strong netball knowledge uh, and also a really close connection to Maori Pacific Island community. Again, I was really uh, very, very happy with the, the way the panel went together. Look, a review will often take multiple weeks, even months. Uh, this type of review in particular, where you're speaking to so many people, uh, those people need to be available. Uh, they need to have the time to prepare for those reviews, uh, the, the questions and answers. Uh, and then ultimately, uh, we've produced a very comprehensive report um, with multiple drafts where people are given the opportunity to provide comment before a final report is provided. So it's a comprehensive process uh, that's led to a comprehensive report, uh, and I'm very comfortable with the time it's taken. Yeah, it was a really wide cross-section that we spoke to uh, of the Nepal community and indeed the broader sports community. So every player was spoken to, uh, every member of management uh, and the coaching group obviously. And then we tried to cast the net quite wide. Uh, we spoke to over 40 people. Uh, that included things like the franchise coaches, the ANZ franchise coaches, um, a cross-section of those, not, not all of them. Um, a number of key influences in the, in the netball community, representatives from high performance sport. Uh, so yeah, I think a, a very strong, broad cross-section. Well, the terms of reference of phase two will be developed uh, with Netball New Zealand shortly, but it is to take a deeper dive into that whole high performance pathway. So we've already identified for Netball New Zealand some areas we think that review needs to look at uh, and some potential gaps, but they'll be developed in much more detail and clearly relate also to resourcing. I mean, you can only spend what you've got, uh, but uh, there are some real opportunities, I think, for Netball New Zealand to, to take the sport to another level in terms of its high performance. I think certainly uh, we, Netball needs to expose its elite players to as much high quality Netball as it can. Uh, and I think that's a gap at the moment. Uh, how that's best addressed is something we'll look at uh, in more detail. Uh, one of the other areas we identified, uh, for example, is the need for real netball high performance expertise within Netball New Zealand. And I think uh, Jenny's already got clear plans in place and the Netball New Zealand board have clear plans in place to address that. So already, uh, even though phase two hasn't started, Netball New Zealand's starting to respond uh, to those gaps already. In terms of the support for the coaching group, uh, we concluded that uh, probably because the team was performing relatively well until quite late in the program, uh, Nipple New Zealand adopted a fairly hands-off approach at that stage, and that was probably understandable. In reality, uh, we also found that things were starting to struggle within the team, uh, and there was a disconnect developing, and probably Nipple New Zealand discovered that and intervened later than we believe would have been ideal. Uh, so uh, yes, we would have liked to have seen greater support in an earlier date and we think that could have helped a, a lot, uh, but hindsight's a wonderful thing. The, the report basically says that uh, after the Constellation Cup and the, the Silver Ferns suffered four pretty significant losses, that uh, Netball New Zealand became understandably concerned about whether the team was on track. Uh, and a number of steps were taken, which to be fair to the coaching staff, they fully uh, supported, to try to address those issues. Uh, unfortunately, those interventions occurred too late uh, and didn't have time to have any material impact on the team by the time they got to the Gold Coast. To a degree, coaches like to be able to coach their team uh, away from interference. And um, I think Nepal New Zealand appointed coaches that they supported and believed in and the coaches then were given time to do their job. Uh, as I've said, uh, I think things started to go off track. Uh, they probably weren't identified 
soon enough. Uh, but when they were identified, attempts were made to, to address those. So, uh, look, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Um, I'm sure Netball New Zealand wishes that it had done certain things sooner. Um, but as I said, it reacted when it did, uh, but it was too late to get things back on track. Well, after the loss, the 4-0 loss to Australia, um, I think the CEO of Netball New Zealand and the Netball New Zealand board uh, felt uh, extremely concerned. Uh, and therefore a number of steps were taken uh, with the support of the High Performance Director to try to fill some of those gaps. And that included, for example, formalising a relationship with Lynn Gunson, former coach and, and former uh, great captain of Netball New Zealand, to provide additional support to the coaching group, uh, stronger work on culture, bringing in an Australian expert in, in, in that uh, area, uh, and addressing a number of sort of ancillary issues uh, around that. And there were also attempts to look at some of the retired players to see whether they were prepared to, to re-engage or willing to sort of come out of retirement. So a number of steps were taken to, to try and shore up some of the gaps. Uh, unfortunately, uh, those interventions were too late. In terms of the uh, results of the sides through 2016 and 2017, it shouldn't be forgotten that the, the side actually performed well. Uh, victories over Australia right up until mid-2017, uh, victories over England. So uh, Netball New Zealand effectively allowed the coach and the playing group to get on with it. Uh, now in hindsight, some of the gaps that were uh, probably developing during that period weren't identified, primarily because the team was still performing pretty much at a traditional Silver Ferns level. We have a, a approach with the review that we don't detail any of the names of any one person that we spoke to. But suffice to say, uh, the panel uh, received a very clear and full briefing around the Laura situation and we think we fully understand uh, what took place. There is absolutely no doubt that uh, this side suffered from a, a lack of experience, uh, both on the court and in the leadership group. And Laura's unavailability, together with the retirements of a number of other key players, unquestionably impacted on, on the final outcome. Uh, there's also no doubt that Netball New Zealand made attempts post the Constellation Cup uh, to re-engage with Laura, uh, but for a variety of reasons, uh, she ultimately declared herself unavailable. So in terms of eligibility of players playing overseas and their, and their ability to return to the Silver Ferns, I think that's phase two of the review. Uh, I think it's an important part of phase two. It's an important part of professional sport going forward, uh, but it's a complicated issue. Uh, so I, I'm confident Netball New Zealand will look at that in more detail in the months to come. There was very little feedback about the whole eligibility issue. Um, obviously it arose in relation to Laura Langman. Uh, but generally I think the uh, New Zealand netball community understands uh, the issue uh, and it simply wasn't an issue uh, for us. Well there were no recommendations specifically about the setup uh, other than to say that the uh, issues that had unfolded over time between the playing group and the head coach needed to be addressed. Uh, beyond that, uh, the the traditional coaching model of a head coach, assistant coach, uh, the makeup of, of the coaching group and management group uh, isn't something that we have uh, called into question. The dynamic between the uh, head coach and the playing group uh, over time uh, became problematic. There was no doubt about that. That is certainly the, the view of the review panel. And that primarily related to a head coach with a very strong philosophy uh, that is based on an athlete-led, athlete-driven uh, approach to coaching. And that type of philosophy is incredibly uh, popular and well-advanced within, within coaching circles, and I'm certainly not in any way critical of it. Uh, it works superbly with many high-performing teams. The challenge uh, the Silver Ferns faced is that uh, athlete-led, athlete-driven philosophy tends to work best with a team that is quite experienced and has leaders ready to step up and move into that space. And unfortunately, we concluded there was a disconnect with this team. This team was relatively young, relatively inexperienced, had lost a huge amount of its leaders. And it was crying out for a more hands-on, structured, coach-driven approach at that stage in its development. So uh, you, you simply had a disconnect develop over time, in our view, um, between the philosophy of the coach 
and arguably the need of the players. Uh, and over time, that disconnect became problematic. One of the reasons the review isn't released in full is simply to protect the confidentiality of all participants. And frankly, we received some extraordinarily honest and clear feedback from everybody we spoke to. Uh, and it would have just been inappropriate to breach that confidence and we wouldn't have received that information if we had been publishing everything that was said and all of the feedback we received. So uh, the players, the coaching group, the management group, everyone was assured of that confidentiality and it's really important we respect that going forward. Well, in terms of uh, the carry through by the Netball New Zealand board and staff, uh, I remain extremely confident that that will occur and indeed uh, you'll, all, you'll soon hear from Jenny Wiley about some of the things that Netball New Zealand intend to do in that space. Uh, so great confidence there. Um, I think Netball New Zealand have found the report quite challenging in some respects. Uh, we certainly haven't pulled punches, we've not endeavoured to uh, shy away from any issues uh, and uh, yeah, I'm very confident that the report is comprehensive uh, and addresses what needs to be addressed. In terms of the ferns going forward, uh, not everything is broken, you know, far from it. Uh, there is a huge amount of talent within the team, a huge amount of talent coming through the pathway. Uh, so. Uh, yes, the results are incredibly disappointing, but you know I wouldn't lurch into crisis mode just yet, uh, by any means. There was an awful lot good in the netball system and the netball community. Having said that, uh, I think there is room for some real improvement in high performance. I think Netball New Zealand recognise that. Uh, I think they're excited by those possibilities. Uh, and uh, I think this provides a, a really firm foundation, along with phase two of the review, to go forward to bigger and better things. So in terms of phase two going forward, uh, the terms of reference now need to be uh, fully developed uh, and the final composition of the panel to, to undertake phase two uh, agreed upon. Uh, it will, however, be a deeper dive into that whole high performance pathway. Our review in phase one already identifies a series of issues that we think need to be explored further and a series of opportunities. Uh, Netball New Zealand's already acting on some of those recommendations already um, so the, the, the momentum of phase two has actually already begun, uh, but uh, you know, this will be a deeper dive into that whole high performance pathway. Look, I believe the, net, the review process was incredibly important for Netball, uh, and I think it's to be uh, congratulated for uh, engaging with the panel uh, and uh, putting the resource behind it. Uh, you know, Every sport needs to succeed in high performance. It creates a real momentum for the sport right through every level. Uh, so incredibly important and I think Netball New Zealand realised the results in the Com Games and the build up were, were really disappointing and needed to have a fresh comprehensive look. Uh, so uh, I think Netball New Zealand should be congratulated for doing it. Um, the, re the report in many respects is quite challenging for uh, Netball uh, but I'm already seeing a real willingness uh, on the part of Netball to embrace the report uh, and uh, I'm very optimistic about its future.